Um, can you briefly talk about like, because we're talking about this chart now, can you briefly talk about how a swing trader and a scalper would manage these differently? So for example, the breakout on bar 50, the surprise breakout, when they see 51, are they gonna look to exit at the 50 close? Or are they going to, is a scalper gonna exit at the 50 close or is a scalper gonna stay long? Or is a scalper gonna exit below 51 and then buy again above 52? What would a scalper be doing here and what would a swing trader be doing? Okay, 50 is a really special bar, right? Um, sometimes you get these really, really big bars that close somewhere in the middle. And your first reaction is, oh my gosh, that's terrible. Hmm. But on a small time frame, that big tail might be a bull flag. Right. And it was here. I, I don't I, I didn't check a one minute chart. I can't get it here. I'll try it here. I can I can show it. Um let me just do okay. try a one minute chart. Okay. Um let me go back over there. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's very so clear. The bar, you know. Um, does it look all that bearish here? No, it looks like a wedge bull flag, three legs down, one, two, and three, right? right? So sometimes you get the big tail on the five minute chart and it's a bull flag on a, on a lower time frame chart. So um, if, if you remember on a bar like that, if you're experienced, you can just buy the market and put a stop below the most recent low down here. Right. And you say, well, I don't want to risk that much. Yeah, well, if you don't want to risk that much and just trade small. Right. You know, and trade small 20% of your normal position. If you trade um, five micro E-minis, 20% is one micro E-mini. If you trade one E-mini, 20% is two micro E-minis, right? And you can add on afterwards. So, but whenever I see a big bar like that with a big tail on top, and it's a really special bar, you know, I, the odds are really high it's gonna go up. It could, be, it could have been a trap, right? But I knew the range was gonna double. And that's a really special bar. So I would not take the first, I would not short the first reversal down. I'd wait to see if we get two or three bear bars. Hey, I bought during 50. I'm going to scalp out, you know, five points is probably a scalp today because of how right. tight all the range is. Right. So you buy above 49, you scalp out five points. If you buy during 50, you scalp out five points. And you might sell below 51 if you're a scalper, hoping it's a failed breakout. I would not because. Um, that, that it's really an exceptionally big bar. And if you're long, if you're long during, if you're long on the 50 close and then you see 51 and you're a scalper, what would you do? Uh, either get out below 51, the bear bar, but I would not short right. or hold with a stop down here and hope for the best. Right. Yeah. And I, I know the math of this. I know, I know it's like 70% that we're going up even with that bear bar. And if, if you did get out, you buy again above 52, you buy again above 53, buy again above 54, above 58. And, and as soon as you get in, um, you put a stop um, below the most recent low, 52, or the size of a scalp below, let's say you bought 54, you get out the size of a scalp below 54 or um, below a bear bar, um, 56. A swing trader could put a stop below the most recent low, but let's say he bought um, let's say he bought about 49 and the market's up here and he's still long, right? So now he has 25 points profit um, and he's 25 points risk, right? That, that's too much to risk. So he'll take some partial profits. And a lot of traders did that and that created these two bear bars, all right? Okay. And you wait for a bull bar closing near as high like that and then go back to your full, full size position. Right, so a scalper is more quick to exit, but they have to be quick to get back in when they see a bull bar closing on its high. Whereas a swing trader can use a stop below the prior low, but they're gonna want to take part off when the risk gets too big and then add it back on um, above a bull bar or when, when another setup presents itself. Is that accurate? That's accurate. And a swing trader often has to risk more than a scalper. So for example, if you're taking trades on the daily chart, uh, and the average bar is 50 points tall, you're going to be risking at least 50 points. Right. Right. You're not going to trade the same size as you would on a scalp where you might risk six or seven points. Right. So the, 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 the bigger your time frame, the, the more, the longer you're planning to hold on to the bars, the smaller you have to trade. And if you trade um, and you get in early on where your risk is small and then the market goes your way, you know, if you bought above 49 and put a stop below 48, your risk is small. But then the market does this 
you know, you have to take profits because now your risk is from here, the current price down to here. And you can say, well, it's other people's money. No, it's not other people's money. Look at your account. It's in your account. It's your money. And, you know, you, you cannot risk that much. So you have to take profits. And that's why you get this. You know, the computers are taking profits and they wait to see um, if other computers start to buy. And if they do and form a bull bar closing near its high, the people who exited here go back to their full size position there. Right. So, so a scalper is constantly exiting and getting back in. A swing trader is holding and, and, um, and lessening their position size based on the profits that they have in their account. Um, mm -hmm. What would you have to see if you were a swing trader and you got long above 49 or doing 50? What would you have to see to exit based on the premise changing? Uh, depends. Depends. You know, some swing traders will be very quick to get out, and those are swing traders who are quick to get back in. Right. If you find that you get out below fifty-one, and you do not buy again above fifty-two or fifty-three, right, you got to change what you're doing. Right. Right. And that's one of the big problems with scalpers in trends. They take the first scalp, and then they never get back in. Right. Right. And that's why traders should focus on swing trading because they'll miss too many trades. And how do you get back in? Um, you can see where to get out. If you're long, you get up below 50, you get up below a bear bar closing below its midpoint, below 51, below um, 56 or 57, below 61, right? And where do you get long again? I've said several times already today. If, if the market is, if it's, not, if, if it's not a good short, then it's probably still long. And you have to just wait for a bull bar closing near its high and place an order to buy one tick above the high of the bar and right. just do it and hold on. And if you find yourself doing it, exiting with one or two points profit, you know, go to Walmart, go out and take a walk for 10 minutes, do, do something to stop yourself from doing that. Right? right. If you're a swing trader, you know, you cannot be scalping. You know, if you're a swing trader, then swing trade. 